Hello and welcome back to a video. It has been a week, but I'm back. And today we are building something very cool. You, if you have seen my latest short, you will see that my orbit is completely littered with anything. Like everything that has ever flown to space is still in orbit. My orbit is a huge junkyard. And to combat that, in this video we will combat that. And we will build a completely 100% reusable launch system that can go to Minmus. It can't really deliver anything into orbit, but it can deliver Kerbals to Minmus. So here we are building it and it has a very cool mechanism. I thought around the edge a bit and used some robotics. You can enhance crafts by using robotics. Although I wouldn't recommend using robotics for more than, let's say, a 30 minute long mission. Hmm. If you just want to go to Duna, sure, you can use robotics. If you want to do a, a Jewel 5 mission, don't use robotics. Because the Kraken will just awake if you use robotics uh, too much. In that case, it was good. And if you're using hinges, always strut everything together. So, yeah, you can see how I built it in the background and how it will unfold. And what I want to say here is thank you a lot for this huge support on the last video it was it was so amazing like 1800 views for me like on youtube i know this is not a lot like on youtube uh, internationally speaking 1 million isn't a lot but for me myself for myself 1800 views is a huge amount and i want to say thank you here and if you're a new subscriber to the channel, hello and welcome. I hope you liked the video. There will be more competitions soon. I already have the, com the competitor. Yeah, that's how to say it. I already have the competitor for the next competition ready. Um, but it will be in KSP2, but pretty early in KSP2. So I, c I keep pumping out those challenges. It seems to be a format you like, but uh, like you have to understand that I can't put out challenges or uh, speedrun videos with other people like every week and so in this time I will just do the normal videos I have always done and will always do. So yeah this this here could be my last or one of my last KSP1 videos. Crazy how, how time passes. Uh, I re I'm really looking forward to the KSP2 time. But yeah, something regarding the last video, um, I, I did it with Zenoth, of course, he was in the video, and a guy called Cool Sonic Soul, hello, if you're watching this video, uh, he wrote me that the link to Ch uh, Zenoth's uh, channel wasn't working. Thank you a lot for that, I, I messed up a bit there. Um, so I will put Zenoth's uh, channel in the info card in this video. So if you missed it last time, you can check out his channel in the info card. Uh, I think I will uh, link mine too, so you can subscribe if you want to, you know. Helps out the YouTube algorithm. And something else happened. We passed 100 subscribers. Nothing with 100,000, just 100. But imagine, um, imagine a building full of people. Imagine a building with 100 people in it. I mean. If you if you see it that way, 100 is a lot, and it, it's 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 crazy. I'm really motivated for this video now. Mm, yeah, and the build is almost over, so you can see there how this hinge system works. So, and why why did I even build this hinge system? Uh, the point behind the hinge system is that I don't have to do this weird flip maneuver. I my all other. Um, Minmus planes have to do all others, like the one other. You know when you land on Minmus with a plane and the engines are at the back, like uh, relative to the plane and the X of the plane, uh, you, you land horizontally and then have to do a flip maneuver to land on the tires and I kind of don't, I, I don't really like that anymore and so I designed this system. And you can see it has separate landing legs for landing on Minmus vertically because I don't like landing on the tires because in a real life scenario what if those tires break then then the craft can't land anymore I mean that's just a dumb thing I thought about that nobody really thinks about but yeah I mean all my other 
planes, even my even stuff on my channel landed on the tires. But I kind of like it to do it a bit more realistic. So I added some air brakes in the booster to control it. And um, I also, and this was a problem I had, added some fins. At first just normal fins. Then I did a test flight and it spun out of control horribly. So uh, I retried it and at the end I landed at grid fin. So if you ever have this situation where I have a plane on the top, build grid fins with a lot of control surfaces. So just spam control surfaces in it. Really, spam. Uh, there's no, not really a better way to do it. Funny, funny enough that Matt Laun posted a video today where he built a dinosaur, like a rocket, and he encountered the exact same problem. That was interesting, but he didn't solve it at all. He, he gave up after a while. And I, I thought this rocket launch would be horribly difficult, but I managed to get this thing into orbit uh, at the third try. Uh, but then I couldn't land it back at the KSP runway, so I just tried it again. So now we are done. Let's get to the launch. And here we are, lifting off. This sound that you heard in the background is from a roller coaster called Euromir or Euromir or whatever you want to call it. And it had this real cool Russian countdown in it, so I just cut, uh, cut it in at the countdown. I mean, even if you don't speak Russian, and I, I myself don't speak Russian too, or at least not very well, it's not really hard to translate tri and dva, is it? But yeah. I, it's it's cool. Like rocket launches are cool, but with a countdown, it's even cooler. So, stage separation with a lot of explosions. So technically, guys, technically, this rocket is only 99.9% .9 reusable because one of those small pieces fell off. But yeah, continuing uh, into orbit, we will we will watch the booster land in the ocean after the mission is done. Just to not intercept the flow. And we have made it through the rough launch. We are, we are in orbit. Uh, then all we have to do is uh, to uh, adjust uh, our... Fuck, what is it called? The tilt. Ah, I don't know, I just call it tilt. Like the tilt of the orbit. A plane change, haha, <laughs> now I got it. We have to do a plane change maneuver. Uh, this is this here, you can see the plane change maneuver. Because Minmus is on a different plane than the Mon, for instance, or the KSC. So you have to uh, do a plane change. Theoretically, you could launch on, let's say, the crater launch site and get a transfer window. But I mean, those 30 meters a second that this maneuver took wasn't it really a bomber, was it? So now, the burn to Minmus begins. The first. 100% reusable space system will land on Minmus. So, let's go to Minmus. I haven't visited Minmus in, in a long time. And, I don't know, it's one of my favorite places. That's that's a question I have for you. You could write a comment with it if, if you have an interesting opinion on the topic. And we can discuss about it. What is your favorite place to land on? That is the question of the week. What is your favorite place to land on? For me, it's got to be Lathe. Like, Lathe has so many opportunities to land like plane style stuff on it. Just too cool. You can do so much stuff with uh, Lathe. And it has such a cool vibe to it. It feels like Pandora from Avatar 1 and 2. It's just really cool. At some point, maybe in KSP2, I want to build a huge dropship that can land on Lathe. Just like in Avatar. That would be really cool with the uh, robot mechacillas in them and all, all that stuff. But yeah, now circularizing around Minmus and after that getting to the landing, the really important and interesting part. So I, I made life easy for myself and just landed at the Minmus Flats. Is it the Great Minmus Flats or just Minmus Flats? I have no idea, but we will land there and then you can see the beauty of this system, how, how, uh, how it will land. So. Deceleration burn is done. We are on a crash course now. 
and hopefully the engine will work because uh, I don't want to crash. So landing legs extended, we can burn retrograde and then land on Minmus with the first reusable rocket. Yeah, and now is the point where I run out of things to say, so I just tell you a story about my life. If you want to hear it, I don't know, but I will just tell it anyway. So. Hmm. Yeah, I, it was a really interesting day today. I I visited my grandma with the car and after that it was dark and I could go on a really cool uh, night drive over the autobahn, over the highway. Uh, it was really cool. I like driving on the highway when it's dark because then the traffic isn't as much and you can just cruise, listen to a bit of music. It's just... Uh, a feeling of endless freedom. I don't know if you're a car driver, maybe you can understand what I mean with a uh, feeling of freedom when driving on the highway. But you can go wherever you want um, and whenever you want. And wherever. Like, that's just cool. I can, I can decide where I, can, where I want to go. Is the train? Um, I don't. But the train doesn't have traffic jams, so. If possible, I always pick the train, but my, my grandma lives a bit in a rural area and a bit remote. So the car is really the best option to, to go there. But you know for what the car isn't the best option? To go to Minmus. Wow, that segue was in incredibly good. So planting some surface science here. And I guess the segue was horrible anyway. We planted the flag, completely forgot to mention it. Completely forgot to do that dramatic pause there. Wow. Yeah. Now play some song, some ground science. Oh, and I will introduce a new category today. At the end of the video, when nobody's watching, I will do the dead joke of the week. So for your daily dose of headache. And then now let's head home. Let's go home. We have seen enough from Minmus. We want to uh, go home, visit the other Kerbals. Yeah, you can see how cool the system looks when taking off. I, I think this system turned out really well with those aerodynamic pieces and stuff. And I can't wait for KSP2. The wing editor will be so great. Like, I can't wait to just build a plane and just... Whoa. On launch day, I, 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 will, I want to do a video where I just build a plane. Nothing more than just building a plane. If, I'm flying it around Kerbin. Like that's what I want to do. That's half of my playtime in KSP1 is just building a plane and flying around. It's just super cool if you have an, a nice plane system. And then you can try uh, shooting it into space. Whenever I have no idea what I should do, I just um, recreate the fighter jet and send it to Lathe. <laughs> because why not? I've sent an F-14 to Lathe, for instance. Um, it was the mission where I made the flop gun intro from. If you haven't seen the flop gun intro, check it out. I will, I will put it in the info description uh, because Top Gun is one of my favorite movies. And so I made a spoof of it called Flop Gun. Uh, yeah, j just just for fun, like the the average just for fun video. But yeah, lowering the apoapsis, periapsis. You know what I mean. And then we can get to the point where we will see magic appear where we can unfold those uh, rear control surfaces. And this point will be now. Let's go. Beautiful, isn't it? Now we have a plane. Like, isn't that cool? We have a lander and a plane. And the, the it's not a plane that has to do a weird flip maneuver like all my other planes. No, this one ha is both. It's a transformer, basically. So now we're entering. Sadly, the nose cone popped. I, I really don't know why. Like, I've used these aerodynamic nose cones on space shuttles in the past, and it was never a problem. I even flew to Duna with a space shuttle and brought it back without his nose cone exploding, but yeah, for some reason, for some reason, it exploded. And I couldn't get it uh, any different. I re recorded the whole mission just for that, that this doesn't happen, but no way. And then something funny happened uh, after that, like we, I aerobraked and now I'm pretty much in an orbit, like now I'm in an orbit, the stable curb in orbit. Oh, and you can see all the junk floating around, horrible, isn't it? 
then I decelerated and I targeted the wrong the wrong uh, landing site. Like I targeted the coast landing site, the, the one uh, on the top. And then I noticed it and I was like, oh shit, I, I don't, I have to go to another long side. Flipped the plane around and I could, I could save it, but uh, I didn't even have a quick save. Can you imagine? My last quick save was from, from uh, Minmus landing. Oh god, I would have to record all stuff again. But now, watch closely because this landing is my most beautiful landing ever of a plane in the whole, in the whole lifespan of KSP. It's the most beautiful landing every anybody has done, basically. So let's see how we do. First, it wasn't. First, that I almost crashed, and it, remember, I didn't have a quick save. It had to go right. And then, see this, how smooth. Bam. Schön. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Then deploying the parachutes. And for some reason the brakes didn't work, like just not, so I had to let it roll out and it just wouldn't stop and so I just lowered it down. Yeah, here you can see. After like a minute of ro rolling I just lowered down the plane. But now we forgot something. What is the booster doing? We are going back to the booster. And we can see how that guy is doing. So it, this is nothing spectacular here. Just um, boxing it through re-entry, just using parachutes to uh, get it into the right orientation. Like now the grid fins are opposite again. But yeah, with that, this video is over. I really hope you liked it. Competition is coming soon in KSP2. If you want to be in a competition, write me on Discord, Marvin, hashtag 9555. And then I will see you in the next video, which could be a case P2. So have a nice day, morning or evening, whatever it is. Bye.